Welcome to the Dropout Multimillionaire Podcast, hosted by best selling author and serial entrepreneur Brian Will. Here we go. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Dropout Multimillionaire Podcast. I am your host, Brian Will. This podcast is based on my best selling book, The Dropout Multimillionaire 37 Business Lessons and How to Succeed with No Money, No Education and no clue. And that was me, by the way. That's why I wrote the book. In today's episode, we're going to talk about money, money personally and money in your business. And hey, who doesn't like to talk about money? Now, I assume most of y'all listening to this are either thinking about starting a business, you have a business, you're trying to grow, but you're pretty much all business owners. So let's talk about that. If you're a business owner, I'm going to guess that unless you're a saint, the reason you started your business or the reason you want to grow your business is because you want to make money. In fact, I'm guessing you want to make a lot of money. I'm also guessing that you believe that being in your own business is the best way to make a lot of money. And by the way, I agree with you. Unless you're the CEO of a major company, an investment banker, or a venture capitalist, now they all make a ton of money, but I didn't really have that opportunity. And I'm assuming if you're listening to this, you didn't either. So starting your own business is probably the best way to do it. Now, when we talk about money, I like to think of money in different ways. Like money is a means to an end, right? It's green paper. Money is also a scorecard. It's a scorecard for how you're doing in business. It measures your success. Or in some cases, unfortunately, it measures your failure. I also like to say that money or making money comes in five different stages. Stage one is we just need to pay the bills. This is the pay the bills phase. We've started a business, we're rolling, we're probably investing. We're spending, we got to get that business going to where it will pay the bills. That is phase one. If you get past phase one and you roll into phase two, you started to create some success. We start doing things. This is what I call the accumulation phase. I can tell you when we sold our company in 2006, I went from making a hundred thousand a year to a million dollars a year plus. And I bought a lake house and a beach house and an airplane and, and a boat and wave runners. And I had multiple cars and motorcycle. I bought every single thing that I thought I ever wanted when I started making a lot of money. This is the accumulation phase, basically toys. Now, if you get past that phase, and hopefully you do before you go broke, then we get into what we call the savings phase. This is a good one. This is when you start putting money away. You put money away just in case that gravy train stops. In fact, this is where we create what I call the McDonald's safety net. I heard this uh, from, it was a third baseman for the Atlanta Braves. I did some landscaping for him back in the 90s. His name was Terry. And he told me that he had this McDonald's safety net uh, idea that says, you need to have enough money put away, enough passive income, so that if you lose your primary source of income, you could literally get a job at McDonald's and maintain whatever lifestyle that you currently have. I love that, the McDonald's safety net. If you make it past that, we get into what we call the charity phase. And it's, what are you going to leave? What are you going to do? What, how are you going to create a legacy? What are you going to give back to the world? What can you give away? What can you do that's good? Once we get past that and you're getting towards the end of your life, we get into the inheritance phase. And what are you going to leave the children? I, I, I heard this from Warren Buffett once. and I thought it was hilarious. He said, I am not giving my children all my money. I will give them maybe a billion dollars each. And in his mind, clearly that's not a lot of money. I'd like him to adopt me, I'm just saying. Now, these are the phases of money. Let's talk a little bit about money and business, okay? Those are personal. Let's get into business a little bit. Your money and business, I have really three rules about money and business. Rule number one is cash is king. Now, you've heard Dave Ramsey say you need six months of emergency cash to pay your bills if you get in trouble. By the way, that applies to your business as well, not just personally. And I would tell you that you need at least that. And, and in fact, I have a story of my first company we had built up over about seven or eight years and we were doing okay. And I had a couple houses and cars. And I can remember when my largest contractor fired us and refused to pay us $150,000 that he owed us in that month. Now, I didn't have a dime of savings. I was up to my eyeballs in debt. I owed 
payroll. I owed suppliers. I had car payments, house payments. I was in debt, baby. And a $150,000 hit took me out. I ended up having to shut the company down, sold literally everything I had in order to pay my bills. And I ended up with $5,000 left because I had no money. I looked good, smelled good, had a nice car, Mercedes, but I had no cash. As I like to say, and, and here's a scenario I use a lot of times, I'll give you two scenarios. Scenario one is you have 100,000 of cash in the bank and 100,000 of debt. Scenario two is you have no cash and you have no debt. Which one is better? There are people that will tell you, pay off your debt, spend every dollar you've got to get out of debt. That is not a good place to be in, let me tell you. You get out of the grocery store and load up your cart, roll up to the register and say, hey man, I don't have any cash, but I don't have any debt. Can I take these groceries home? You're going home hungry, all right? You need cash. Debt is not always bad. Cheap money is a good thing. In fact, I'll tell you that I don't borrow money unless I either have the cash to pay it off or I have enough passive income, money that I don't have to work for, to make those payments. If one of those two things uh, work, then money is not a bad thing. So that's cash is king. Number two, the golden rule. I love this one. I learned this one early on. He who holds the gold rules. That's my golden rule. And once you give up the gold, once you pay somebody, they now have the gold and whatever they say goes. We talk about this with contractors a lot. You don't pay a contractor until the job is done. When I mean done, I mean 100% done. If they come up to your door and say, hey, we're 95% done. All we have to do is this, this, and this. Can we get a check? The answer is no. Because once you give them a check, you've lost all your leverage. Good luck ever getting them to come back. The golden rule. He who holds the gold rules. And my last rule is in business, you need to pay yourself. You need to pay yourself. And there's, there's a couple of reasons. Number one is you need to create that emergency cash just in case you get in trouble. Okay. Number two, it is mental torture trying to run a business while you can't pay your bills at home. It's a mental disaster. It causes stress. It causes worry. It causes you to start making decisions based on desperation instead of what's actually good for your company. In fact, I read a statistic, 25% of all divorces are over money. And of, and of all the people that get divorced, half of them lose their lifestyle. Okay? So don't risk it all. I know everyone hears stories about people who risk it all and make a fortune. But for every one of those stories, there's a thousand people who did it and lost everything. It's a terrible, terrible idea. Now, personally, and I come from a position of having both significant assets and a high income, I will only risk my income in my investments and not my assets. If I start a new business, I'll spend all the money that I make. I just won't spend any of my assets because I know I'm going to make more money and I'm fine. And you need to build towards that. We call this building a level of life you can afford, whatever it is, $200,000 house, a used Honda. If that's the level of life you can afford, do that, secure it with solid income or cash in the bank, and then move your lifestyle up. And when your lifestyle moves up, then you secure that. And then you move your lifestyle up again and you keep doing that. And all the way, you're, you've got this little McDonald's safety net to, to, to take care of you. If something happens, you will not lose that lifestyle. You do not want to have to start over. I've done that. It sucks. So that's your McDonald's safety net. Those are your rules for cash and business and personal. Here's the deal, folks. Protect yourself and don't be a statistic. That's it for today. Everything I talk about is in the book, The Dropout Multimillionaire. If you want to learn more, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, my YouTube channel. Or just go to www.brianwillmedia.com for more information on the books, social media, podcast appearances, etc. Make sure you come back for next week for the next episode of The Dropout Multimillionaire. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Dropout Multimillionaire. To learn more about how we can help you with your business, or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, visit www.brianwillmedia.com or the Dropout MM on Instagram.